this is John Colo with GrowingYourGreens.com to have another exciting episode for you and today we're going to get into some questions and answers and also some comments from the last video on the spirulina that I grew. Who knew that growing spirulina could be so controversial? In any case, before we get started, just a standard disclaimer, I apologize, I can't answer everybody's comment or question. There's like over 240,000 subscribers and I get a lot of comments, questions over all different areas and I just can't respond to everybody. I made it a policy that I don't respond because that would be a full-time job and I have to live my life and not just, you know, um, live my life answering questions online <laughs> and get outside and garden actually. Um, so, but if you do have a question, there are some ways I, they may be able to get answered. Uh, the first way is actually to email me through the YouTube email system. If you click the about page, uh, there's a little space that you could actually send me a message through YouTube. I'll get the question and it may appear in a video such as this one. Also on the uh, my YouTube homepage at youtube.com slash greens, there's a discussion tab. You can post a question there and that also may get pulled for a session like this. Now if you do have a question you need to get answered and you want to talk to me, I do have a way you could do that also for just simply five bucks. Of that I get four dollars and of that I keep zero. Um, that money actually goes to get my videos transcribed into English for the hearing impaired and for people that speak foreign languages. It's called my Fiverr campaign where you could actually talk to me. I will give you a call anywhere in the United States or Canada for 10 minutes for simply five bucks and answer any questions to the best of my ability uh, that I can to help you guys out. All right, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this episode. Uh, the first few comments actually have to do with growing spirulina. In my last video, I'll post a link down below to that. Um, YXCVMK, John, I appreciate your videos, but such growing can't be organic at all. This looks like chemical fertilizers, not for me. So yes, uh, while I do agree and teach overall organic growing methods, one day I will have some hydroponic videos, which actually is not organic either. <laughs> what is organic actually? You know, that's a whole definition in it unto itself. Um, but it's my feeling that by growing your own food, it's always going to be better than the alternatives, right? Of course, growing organically would be the best, and there can be inherent challenges with growing spirulina under or organic situations, like by using natural nutrients that aren't the exact nutrients you might need with a whole bunch of other uh, problems with that. So yes, I show using some synthetic nutrients in there, for specific reasons so that I don't get into problems with, you know, getting the system out of whack. And, you know, as much as I grow a ton of my own food, you guys will see all around me, I mean, I have food in my whole backyard, you know, I'm still, you know, using part of the agriculture giant, the system in my life, right? I still buy organic food from the grocery store, right? I buy like 90 to 95% plus organic and I eat maybe five to 10% depending on time of year and whatnot. Uh, conventionally grown foods that are minimal, have minimal residues and sprays and whatnot. And this includes hydroponic, uh, you know, produce grown with synthetic nutrients. So I definitely think that growing your own food with synthetic nutrients, instead of getting food that's being shipped and trucked from Mexico, from Canada, from California, wherever you live to where you you're going to eat it, is way better, right? So yes, that's why I showed that spirulina video. And no, I'm not perfect, and sometimes my shit stinks also. So I want you guys to be aware of this. All right, so yeah, so do the best you can, and, and if you're like eating all organic, growing all your own food, more power to you. For the majority of my viewers out there, I know you guys are not simply able to do that at this point, and there's always a balance. There needs to be a balance in everything. Everything's not about all organic or all nothing or all conventional, right? There's a balance, and yes, I agree with organic agriculture and even more than better than organic regenerative agriculture and actually building the soil microbes. But in some cases, you know, uh, synthetic nutrients may play a role, may have an answer. Soon I'll actually be setting up a hydroponic system, you know, which will be using synthetic nutrients. But, you know, once again, growing your food in any way you can, in my opinion, even if you're using Miracle Crop fertilizers, always better than buying the food at the store. All right, next question pesto. 12601. 95% of folks who will try this will wind up sick from bacteria. So, okay, so, you know, there's bacteria all around me. In my garden, there's plenty of bacteria. I mean, actually, we are made of more bacteria than human cells. So, look that up, right? And my dad from a young age explained to me that there's good bacteria and there's bad bacteria. It's only when these bad bacteria get out of whack 
and we get really sick and messed up, right? We have our good bacteria that's gonna fight off the bad guys. Now, while spirulina, you know, may have some bacterial contamination, if not grown properly, I think overall, if done properly, it's actually quite healthier, quite safer than most things that you guys might be eating, like, right? The majority of guys out there aren't vegans or vegetarians or all this kind of stuff, but you're still eating tons of animal products. And in a recent study, you know, there's information that shows that if you're consuming animal products, your kitchen is more contaminated than your toilet bowl, which is insane. Chicken carcasses so covered in fecal matter that researchers at the University of Arizona found more fecal bacteria in the kitchen, uh -uh, sponges, dish towels, and sink drain, than they found swabbing the toilet. Even after bleaching everything twice, in a meat eater's house, it is safer <laughs> to lick the rim of the toilet seat than the kitchen countertop. Isn't that just insane? Like how you, you could have bacterial contamination in your kitchen, even though you think it's all clean and it looks clean, right? So yeah, I mean, don't talk to me about bacterial contamination if you're still eating animal products and I'm eating spirulina, right? I always want to encourage you guys to do the best you can. In my opinion, there's far less risk from eating homegrown spirulina that I grew than animal products from the store, you know, and, and a lot of the other crap that's out there at this point in time. So once again, I want to encourage you guys, good, better, best. I don't eat all organic, right? I try to do the best I can. I don't grow all my own food. I do the best I can. I'm definitely not eating animal products because I don't want to have any problems with that and I'd rather grow my spirulina, right? All right, so next uh, comment was from Zero. This is John Kohler from Growing Greens. Best food to eat, pond scum. Easy to find low on the food chain, blah, blah. So I mean, yes, spirulina is pond scum, you know, on one level, but also it's a very amazing superfood. I want to encourage you guys always to eat lower on the food chain than higher. As you go up in the food chain, there's more problems with biological contamination, whether that's bad bacteria or accumulation of different toxins. In addition, eating lower on the food chain helps out this planet from an environmental sense. Also, in my opinion, it helps you out. The lower on the food chain you're eating, the more phytonutrients and phytochemicals you're getting, which are actually the things that your body needs to help keep you, you know, young, healthy, anti-aging, and disease-free based on all my research. All right, another comment was Ryle. Uh, this kind takes away from nature providing us with natural sources of food. I can understand the idea of potting up a bunch of chilies and having them grow all year round indoors, but this feels a far bit off. So yes, I want to encourage you guys to do as much natural as you guys possibly can. And in nature, you know, if there was times when we were hungry and we'd seen, you know, a pond, a lake with algae blooms growing and we were hungry, there's nothing else, we would eat that. So that's totally natural, right? Now, growing it yourself in a fish tank with synthetic nutrients, that's quite not natural. But have you looked around us lately? You're watching this on a computer. How natural are computers? You know, you, you all use cell phones, right? Most of you guys. Cell phones are really not natural, and they're emitting radio waves right next to your head, you know, and there's incidences of cancer has been increasing in the head due to cell phones. Now, this is not something that the cell phone industry wants out, but that's a whole other topic we're not going to get into. But, uh, you know, we live in a very unnatural world. So, in my opinion, in an unnatural world, sometimes we need to do things that's not natural to protect ourselves from other unnatural things. Like, it's been shown, you know, like, in Chernob Chernobyl and ra radiation disasters, right, algaes, you know, such as chlorella, have been used to basically negate the effects of radiation. So with everything in life, there's always good, bad, and all this stuff. And there's, we need to balance this out. And you guys need to determine, you know, what is the right balance for you. I'm never going to tell you what the balance is that you guys should do. But I'm going to tell you what I do and what I think is valuable. And you guys may want to include them or not, despite if you think it's natural or not in this very unnatural world that we live in today. The next comment was from uh, Tazzy Devil 93 From an outside of the box perspective, eating algae is pretty odd practice. I know my ancestors ate it, but unless it tastes really good, I ain't touching that shit. I've heard it having links to cancer and stuff. So yes, I mean, there are problems with eating algae if it's not grown in a proper way. I personally believe it's a healthy food. 
choice and you know you guys always have choices I make these videos so you guys have choices if I didn't make these videos you guys wouldn't have a choice I mean I've given so many people out there with my videos more choices on how to live how to eat how to grow their own food under different situations you know not everybody has acreage some people might live in an apartment in Manhattan and not even have a balcony to grow anything in you know whatever I mean spirulina is a food you could grow yourself and I just want to get people to grow their own food and take responsibility for their actions in life but also for the food they're eating right I'm not going to worry about that first one. I'm not going to worry about making and enabling and empowering people to take responsibility for their actions because that's a big job. But I can help to have people take responsibility for some of the food they grow, right? And algae is a food you can grow easily and if done properly, I believe it's quite beneficial and healthy for us. At the same time, you know, there are foods that people are eating in their that are putting in their mouth each and every day that cause higher incidences of cancer in my opinion than spirulina now spirulina and other algaes may have some challenges if not grown properly and you eat way too much of it but I would much rather take my chances eating spirulina than eating you know say some uh, meat animal agriculture raised meat you know that are being fed GMO corn and soy there's many studies on this topic and that show that you know you will reduce your lifespan by simply eating meat in excess and that's not too good and actually increases your risks of cancer right. and in my opinion spirulina is better than eating animals and meat in that respect right I always encourage you guys to do good better best do the best you can and that's what I show you guys in my channel I try to teach you guys the best of what I know and for those of you guys that are making comments you know it's easy to make a comment it's much harder to make a video I want to encourage you guys to make videos to share what you've learned and share your experiences you could take two seconds to write a comment but I have over a thousand or eleven hundred videos at this point on teaching people a different way a way of healthy eating and I want to encourage you guys to comment and maybe don't like my video that's fine make a video to teach your better way I'm all for that because what we need in this life is knowledge not just commenters putting people down for you know trying to share their and express their opinions in life because as far as I know this is still a free country I'm free <laughs> at this point to express my opinions on how things could be done uh, better even if it's not the total answer all right uh, next question is from uh, Gabriel G don't play Russian roulette with your health there might be some serious side effects we don't know about eating algae there are some serious researchers claiming this is harmful to ourselves. People don't buy into the hype. The same hype for alkaline water, stupid paleo diets, beach diets, fruit only diets, do your studies, look numerous sources, filter all the people who try to sell you things. All right, Gabriel. So yeah, that's some pretty uh, harsh words there. I mean, I want to encourage people to do the best they can, right? And yes, there's a lot of hype. I like to hype up growing your own food. And you know, I don't necessarily try to sell you anything, although I have people that will sell you things so you can grow higher quality food. And you know, well, a lot of people are twisted when they're selling stuff and get their whole kind of like, you know, marketing mindset behind them and they're in it for one thing, like the profit. You know, you got to find out people's true reasons for doing what they do, right? My reasons for making these videos are to help my fellow man. And I'm sure there's some people that think they're there to help sell their products and help their fellow man, but probably most of them are out for profit. So basically, I don't want to say that, you know, when you buy anything, you know, if, if something is trying to sell you something, it's always bad. But I want you guys to, you know, think about things, right? And think about things logically, think about things, how things would be in nature, and think about, you know, some of the research and data that's out there, right? Yes, there can be problems with any food in the world. You know, and what I like to look at is not like, is this food bad or is it good? Right, wrong, good, bad. I've had this on my show before. You know, if you're driving on the freeway and it's 55 is the speed limit, you're going 56, but everybody's passing you at 68. Are you breaking the law? I mean, will the cop get you or will they get somebody else, right? So things are not always black and white, right and wrong, although, you know, you do need to be very careful when people are trying to sell you stuff. I try to just share the information on things that I think will help you the most. You know, there are definitely a lot of lots of information and I've been taking spirulina now for the last 20 years you know in its dried form and I think by me growing it myself making sure that my growing conditions are proper I could grow higher quality stuff and have fresh spirulina than the dried stuff uh, that I was buying 
And, you know, that's what it is. If you want to eat spirulina, great. If you don't, you know, shut your pie hole and move on to one of my other videos, okay? So, I mean, I think that spirulina and growing your own spirulina could help many people. And it's a better alternative to a lot of the other things that people eat, in my opinion. As you guys saw earlier, you know, the, the studies of the bacterial contamination, right? There's far many more toxins out there that people should be concerned about than the spirulina, like using your cell phone, right? Get rid of your cell phone first, right? I do that, you know, and I eat spirulina any day over using my cell phone, but many of you guys would choose your cell phone over spirulina, you know? This is just my opinions. I'm sharing you guys what I would do, and you guys need to do whatever you guys want to do. If you want to use your cell phone and, you know, not eat spirulina, hey, go for it, right? So the next comment was from uh, Enticed to Zeitgeist. How do you keep the culture pure unless you're filtering the air going in for pathogens and other algae spores that just naturally float around in the air you'll be growing and eating a whole bunch of different algae so basically that's pretty easy what you're gonna do is you know you gotta just make sure you check the pH and that it's up to uh, 10 or very alkaline and uh, in that situation not many other algaes or anything will live so you're gonna have a pretty much pure strain and once again you know the algaes eat other things right so they're gonna take care if your system is balanced out properly I mean right it's like if you're using manure in your garden you got from down the street from a dairy farm you put that in your garden uncomposted how do you know you're not going to get e coli right well you want to compost that manure properly before you use it and i actually recommend don't use and don't use manure so you don't even have the chance of possible e coli or other bacterial contamination or bojine spongiform uh you know disease all this kind of stuff right and just do the best you can take the take the proper practices take this pro proper safety procedures to you know uh, ensure you're gonna have healthy cultures all right so with that that's the end of my rant regarding the spirulina video that I put up I do want to encourage you guys to watch that and it is just yet another way you guys can grow your food at home if you guys want to and don't have the space to do it outside of course I'm always a hundred percent for growing in soil growing man the way that you know uh, nature would not just how man would want to grow but I encourage you guys to you know grow hydroponically or grow spirulina with some you know synthetic chemical fertilizers if that will benefit you and I think more than what most Americans eat this is a step in the right direction now yes it's probably not the answer unless we're all living on Mars and we don't have anything else to eat but spirulina grown in tanks because you can't grow food maybe but you know do the best you can and that's my answer you know I'm not 100% organic, I'm not 100%, you know, anything, you know, except 100% heterosexual. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, into today's questions, let's have some fun. Uh, Jason Jones asks, hey, John, I just moved to San Diego seven months ago and have a small raised bed garden, about five by 10 and several five gallon containers. Can you steer me uh, to some videos or resources for what to grow down here and when? We have some hot peppers and had a cherry tomato plant, which are somewhat fruitful. I would like something that produces something more substantial and less hobby like if that makes sense thanks Jason so Jason I encourage you to experiment right if you have space um, you know I would encourage you to plant fruit trees fruit trees will grow amazingly in San Diego especially some of the more kind of tropical esque fruit trees I would also encourage you to grow things like perennial vegetables search my past videos on perennial vegetables they're much more of a production crop because literally 365 days a year they'll produce be producing uh, you know food for you guys to eat and you know like one pepper plant may produce a bunch of peppers but you know I mean we have this really like fake sense of how much food a plant can produce right I mean if you grow like corn right a whole corn plant could only produce you know three to maybe you know if you if you're really good six ears of corn that's not a lot of corn right in general the bigger the fruit the smaller uh, the yield you'll have. So like if you're growing large bell peppers, it's gonna produce less than uh, you know cherry varieties. So it depends on what your goals are, right? I like to grow the leafy greens because they're the easiest of all. I mean, my peppers here, I guess you could theoretically eat the pepper leaves, not in super large quantities. But you know, uh, I like to grow greens, like the greens right behind me here, you know, you could just uh, pick and eat all the time. So I always wanna encourage you guys to get into growing greens. and. Check out my past episodes that I've made, some in San Diego. 
visit your local farmers markets and local nurseries for the plants that will grow the best and start talking and asking farmers at the farmers markets that's one next question is from uh, Chris Wall John I tried your orange juice and green smoothie put kale collards and spinach plus fresh squeezed OJ all I can say is wow so delicious even my wife loved it and she does not like green smoothies at all thanks again John for your great free info love your show Chris from v VA PS do you feel your lifestyle prevents if not eliminates catching things like the common cold so you know all I want to say to that is that I believe that by you know if we eat a natural healthy diet full of phytochemicals and phytonutrients we will be more apt and our bodies will be more apt to not get sick right it's these chemicals and phytochemicals you know it's the color that makes the 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 peppers red and you know the phytochemicals that make this you know water pepper hot that are lacking in the diet of today yeah many people focus on you know uh, fat protein and carbohydrates and all this kind of stuff as new as you know sources of fuel but we really need these phytonutrients and this is why I like to grow things like spirulina because it is off the charts in the phytonutrients the phytonutrients are the things that pre prevented you know uh, people in Chernobyl to get radiation damage you know when they had the chlorella you know and every different plant or you know algae uh, seaweed has different you know nutrients in there that I want us to eat right and the more these guys you eat and the less of standard American fare of you know things that are you know high in fat and high in calories high in protein and high in carbohydrates you know the better you're gonna be and yes I still eat plenty of carbohydrates but it's important to really focus in on the phytonutrients right because that what is really lacking and if you do that in my opinion and studies that I've seen will show that you will be healthier because of it and your body would be more resilient it's like I build good soil in my garden so that I could have more resilient plants and when we have a good foundation of eating healthy foods you know and standard American you know TV commercials are not teaching you guys to eat the highest quality high antioxidant foods they just want you to shove some fast food some junk food foods that they could profit off of in your body right so yes absolutely eat healthier and you'll be healthier I've been experiencing this now for the last 20 years next question is from Michael Wells hi John really enjoy your channel I've learned so much from your videos since I'm a third year pepper grower I'm still learning to save seed if I remove an 80% ripe pod off a plant and ripen the rest of the way off the plant will the seeds from the pod still be viable I know you know the answer I really appreciate it thanks all right Michael so you know I get a lot of questions regarding seed saving lately and I always encourage you guys to you know let nature do the seed saving work for you it's a lot easier to do it that way than to you tr try to get involved you know I always like to leave my tree collard seeds on my plant until they're totally like brown and dried up then I know they're fully mature if I harvest them green well then you know maybe some percentage may work but a lot won't I want to ensure I have the you know maximum a germination rate for seeds that I am collecting and saving when they're uh, you know properly harvested another thing is that ripe is in definition what is ripe is ripe when the seeds are mature is ripe when it has full color and that can be deceiving if you're growing something like gypsy peppers you know they turn from like a light green to like uh, you know a lighter uh, yellow to like an orange and then if you harvest them when they're orange they're still not ripe you need to wait till they're fully red so I always encourage you guys to harvest your fruits and vegetables and seeds you know when they're fully mature right because that's when nature is ready to spread its seed I'm ready to spread my seed almost every night <laughs> but man I got cucumbers over there that are literally rotting on the vine because I want to let them totally ripen up and the seeds be fully developed so that I don't harvest them too early so yeah that's my answer to that try to let them ripen on the vine as much as you possibly can and if you can't well then do the best you can right harvest them early and then maybe maybe some of the seeds will be proper I mean here's the thing if you harvest a pepper in my opinion and it's 80 percent ripe and the seeds are not fully developed once the peppers detach from the plant those seeds will not develop any further now the, the color on the pepper may change color but there's nothing could ever be added in nutrition or you know nothing can ever uh, you know continue to grow once it's been detached right so that's why I like to leave my peppers attached um, as long as possible not only for you know to color up for the ripeness not only for the nutrition but also so that I'll have viable seeds if that's what I'm going for all right next question is from Frank maximum Chuck 
John, we live in Kingman, Arizona, about 100 miles south of you, and my question is watering. I want to set up an irrigation system, but I don't know what would be the best for this heat. I've considered drip, but lately I've been giving thought to burying a soaker system. A farm out here experiment, experimented with burying soaker hose, and they had bumper crops of veggies. Our weather is close to Las Vegas, 3,400 feet above sea level, and hot as hell in the summer. All right, Frank, so yes, uh, you know, uh, in my situation, on one side of my yard, I have all drip uh, irrigation uh, top down, and on the side of behind me, I have actually subsoil irrigation known as the AquaJet system. And if I had to recommend one, I would recommend subsoil irrigation. And at present time, I do recommend uh, you know using something like the AquaJet if you install it properly. There are inherent design defects with the AquaJet, although I still use it, and will be converting my drip irrigation site over to AquaJet with some tweaks um, because it, it has grown the best that I've seen, you know, compared to the drip, you know. On sides of the drip, I had some plants lose their lives and on the side of the AquaJet, things grew much more bountiful and much stronger. So I'll put a link down below to a video uh, I did with installing the AquaJet so you guys can become more familiar with it. That's what I would recommend for the desert. It's very important and also the watering cycles, you know, are very minimal. So it's going to save water and you're going to get better growth. Even better, in my opinion, than burying a soaker hose or something like that because you're aerating the root zone, which is very important, which is feeding the microbes down there. All right, next question is from Oscar GT 23 Hi, John. Love your videos. Was wondering if you give me tips on what I can grow in my apartment in South Florida. I do have a small screened-in patio, but the ceiling and three sides are covered, so I only get light from one side, the screen wall. Hope that makes sense. I would like to know what I could pot potentially grow inside a pot in that patio. Hope to hear from you. God bless. All right, Oscar. So what I'd recommend for you are a few things. Number one, you want to grow sprouts and microgreens inside, not on that patio, just inside your house. Those are the best things you could grow. Also, you might want to consider growing spirulina. I think that's also another good food you can grow, although you may need to put some light on it. Mine is actually in a nice sunny window where it stays uh, nice and warm and gets good natural sunlight. In general, Plants need light to photosynthesize and produce. So the big problem you're gonna run into is growing fruiting crops. So I actually don't recommend growing fruiting crops such as tomatoes and peppers, cucumbers, and anything else that produces a fruit. But what I would recommend for you are growing things like leafy crops. So things like herbs um, would grow wonderfully in lower light conditions. Also leafy green vegetables. And the smartest leafy green vegetables you can grow in South Florida are the perennial tropical leafy green vegetables. So you're gonna to wanna to check out a video I'll post and link down below that I went to ECHO, E-C-H-O, and you're gonna to wanna to visit them and get a lot of their edible uh, leafy green vegetables that are perennials that you could grow in a container because they will grow literally year round and you'll have food to eat from year round in containers. And yes, until you move to somewhere sunnier, just buy your fruited uh, you know, crops like your tomatoes and peppers and all this kind of stuff, I mean. I still grow, I still buy, you know, peppers and tomatoes and whatnot in the wintertime when I'm not growing them. All right, next question is from Cindy and hi. Uh, I tried growing my own food for a couple years and it was going good. However, after a few years, mice started eating all the crops in the garden to the point that I gave up. Could you provide some tips on what to do about mice destroying a garden? Thanks in advance. All right, so the best defense against uh, mice are other animals. So get some good cats. Adopt a cat from the shelter, you know, there's many cats that are in need of rescue and make sure you get a good mouser and have a couple cats in the garden and provide them a good home and they'll provide you with the best mouse protection that you've ever seen. Another good thing that might be good is, uh, you know, get an owl box and encourage an owl to, uh, you know, get in your space. I mean, of course, you could buy traps and all this kind of stuff and do that. You could, you could build frames and enclose what you're growing to keep mice out. But I'd say let nature do all the work for you, you know, get free labor, you know, give a cat a home and he will provide you with a mouse free garden or get like something like a rat terrier, right? There's certain dogs that really love to just get little critters, right? But I think cats are probably better, but I like dogs just a little bit more. <laughs> all right. So next question is from Royal Poison. John, have you ever discussed the tools you use in the garden? I saw the video where you visited Sears, but you never really discussed what you use and the applications for each tool that you found. It may be a good video. That's an excellent video idea. Thank you. I will do that. You know, I mean, I, there's a lot of tools I don't use. Like, you'll be, you know, 
you'd be surprised to learn that I barely ever use a shovel in my garden. I use like uh, this thing called a half shovel and I use like these other like, uh, you know, uh, diggers to like uh, plant bulbs and there's very few tools I use, but I use them on such a regular basis when they're missing, I go crazy. So yeah, don't misplace my tools. <laughs> Yeah, so I'll make a video on uh, that soon. Be sure to click that subscribe button down below to be notified when I do make that video. It's going to be fun. All right, last question is from uh, Sunja Kushik. Hi, I'm in San Ramon, California. How do you protect your plants in the winter? Thanks. All right, so depending on where you live, your plants can only be protected so far in the winter. You know, I mean, obviously growing tomatoes in the winter in San Ramon, California. I mean, unless you have a greenhouse that has a heater inside it, they're not going to really grow outdoors. So I recommend, you know, growing the things that you don't need to protect, right? I do have a greenhouse and I grow some things year-round in my greenhouse that I wouldn't normally be able to grow outside. Um, you know, I do put up some covers, some hoop houses, some protection, um, you know, over my crops. I'll post a link down below, you know, where I put light Christmas lights up and I put these uh, Grow It Now plant protectors over my crops to grow in the wintertime, which help to a certain extent. But I encourage you to, you're going to swap out your summer garden towards the winter garden and actually about now is a time to start planting your winter garden if you live in a mild climate such as San Ramon, California or most of California you're going to want to think about getting some of those uh, winter crops you know such as maybe some of the peas I just planted some uh, sugar snap peas and uh, you know different greens, lettuces in your garden now so they'll be established for later now even if you live on the east coast you can still grow on the east coast in the winter uh, you want to have hoop houses and maybe even sometimes double hoop houses and grow more cold tolerant stuff such as uh, kale and such as leeks and even things like spinach you know if you have a double hoop house even yes if it's snowing outside all right and yeah check my past videos I have videos on how to protect your plants how to grow in the snow and all this kind of cool stuff I really hope you guys enjoyed this episode if you did hey please give me a thumbs up to let me know also be sure to check that link right down below to subscribe to be updated for my future episodes and be sure to check my past episodes I have over a thousand or eleven hundred episodes now on all aspects of gardening more than any other gardener on YouTube and I want to encourage you guys to always remember to keep on growing. So once again my name is John Kohler with GrowingYourGreens.com. We'll see you next time and remember until then keep on growing. Alright this is John Kohler with GrowingYourGreens.com through another exciting episode for you. In this episode actually I'm not even outside in my garden. I'm actually going to start growing inside my house and to do that I got a handy dandy fish tank and no I'm not going to be growing some 